everyone, this is James Wilson with MTV Strength Training Systems and BikeJames.com and today I want to share some tips to help you jump and manual your bike better. Basically I want to look at the movement pattern behind these skills on the bike, take a look at some of the coaching cues that will help you apply this to the bike better, and then uh, share some exercises and movements that you can do off of the bike that will help you do this better on the bike. So, first of all, what is the movement pattern behind jumping and manualing your bike? Because again, everything that we do on our bike boils down to some of the basic movement patterns that we do off of the bike and then understanding how do we apply them to the bike and the specific skills that we're looking at. So for this here, where we're looking at jumping and manualing our bike, we're looking at an explosive hip hinge. Basically our ability to use our hips to move explosively and propel our center of gravity forward. So again, an explosive hip hinge is basically a broad jump back and forward. So again, this is a, a broad jump as opposed to a vertical jump. A vertical jump is more of a squat, where I'm squatting down and jumping up. A broad jump is more of the explosive hip hinge, where the hips are going back and forward to drive the movement. And so the broad jump, that explosive hip hinge, is the movement pattern that we want to be applying to our bike when we're jumping and manualing our bike. So when we're doing this on the bike, though, it's very important that we pay attention to how we're creating this movement. Now, this came up because I was working with a client a few weeks ago, and we were working on this movement pattern, and I noticed that he was creating it without actually using his hips. And when talking to him, uh, we came across the coaching cue that he was applying, which is stomp your feet. And this is a coaching cue that I've heard, uh, you know, getting more popular um, in, in uh, you know, skills training circles, which is to stomp your feet into the lip of a jump, uh, stomp your feet into your pedals in order to, to help initiate a manual. And the problem with this, and I realize I'm working with, my, with this guy, is that this is coaching a symptom of a good movement, not a cause. And so there's several ways that you can stomp and basically make your feet get heavy into the ground or, or your pedals if you're on your bike. And it doesn't necessarily have to come from the hips. So what I saw from this client of mine was him jumping using his knees. So his hips weren't moving. He was using a, an aggressive knee extension and ankle extension in order to try to jump. And so it creates the feeling if you're, if you're trying to stomp your feet into the ground to jump, well, this feels pretty similar to this. But the movement's created completely differently. You can see a broad jump, you're using your hips coming back and going forward to create this movement, as opposed to just using knee extension and trying to use your ankles. And so again, the, the coaching cue that you're thinking about when applying this to the bike is very important. So I coach people to think about driving their hips forward. You want to push your hips, your belly button, your hips into the lip of the jump or drive them forward towards the stem of the bike. If you're looking to manual, I want to drive the hips forward in order to push the feet into the pedals. And so make sure that it's coming from the hips. And so again, I will cue people that if you do this properly, you'll feel your feet get heavy into your pedals. But there's a difference between feeling your feet get heavy from driving your hips forward and stomping your feet into the pedals. And so making sure that you're, you're thinking about moving from the hips and not from the feet is really important to applying this movement properly on the bike. So what are some things that you can do off of the bike to help with this? Because again, it's a basic movement pattern, but like I saw with my client, I've seen with several other uh, clients that I've worked with over the years, a basic broad jump uh, can be a little uh, tough to pull off because they don't practice jumping all the time. And so that tells me that they're not applying this movement properly to the bike. So what do we do to fix that? So the first thing that we can do is start working on our basic hip hinge because we can't do it explosively if we can't do it in a slower controlled manner. So a good hip hinge looks you know, basically like our deadlift movement. Uh, we don't need any weight though, we're just practicing the movement. So I've got my feet shoulder width apart. I've got balanced feet right now, okay? I've got pressure through the ball of my foot, through my heel, and the outside edge of my foot. It's very important that you pay attention to that pressure and weight at your feet, and you don't let the weight shift too far to the heels, don't come up on your toes, don't let the outside edges of your feet peel off. You wanna make sure you're keeping the good, solid contact with the ground while you're moving. 
So to do a good hip hinge, I'm gonna push my butt back behind my heels. I pretend there's a button on the wall behind me, okay, a big red button, and I'm gonna push that button with my butt. Now when I stop pushing my butt back, I have to stop, because if I don't, I'm gonna continue coming down with my shoulders, and now I'm using my lower back. So you have to really pay attention to when does your butt stop pushing back? Push that button, and when it stops pushing back, that's when you stop. And then to come back up, I wanna think about pushing my butt back over the top of my feet. So I really need to focus on this movement coming from the hips. The butt pushes back to push the button, and then I push my butt back over the top of my feet in order to bring myself back up. So you wanna make sure this movement is coming from the hips like this. And again, making sure you're paying attention to your feet, staying nice and balanced while you're doing that. Now, the next uh, step up from there is a paused broad jump. So for this, you're gonna come down, pause, and then throw the hips forward over the feet and jump. Continue with that jumping motion. So again, down and pause, and jump, and pause broad jump. And then again, the next stage, you can take it to a full broad jump, where you come down and immediately change direction and get that feeling of that quick, dynamic change of direction uh, that you get with a broad jump. But start with your regular hip hinge, move to the pause broad jump, and then finally start working on your regular broad jump. And I guarantee you that if you struggle with this movement at all, uh, at any one of these stages, that as you get better with this, you're gonna find this easier to do on the bike. If you have trouble doing it off the bike, I guarantee that you're having trouble doing it on the bike. So fix the movement off of the bike first, it'll be easier to apply on the bike. And remember, when you're trying to apply this movement to the bike, you're thinking about moving the hips, driving the hips forward to make the feet get heavy, as opposed to stomping the feet into the pedals, which can uh, keep your hips from actually moving and uh, is not what we're looking for. So again, fix that hip hinge, get a better dynamic hip hinge, and you'll find that your jumping and manually is going to improve a lot. Make sure you're using the right coaching cues as well when you're thinking about this on the bike. So once again, it's been James Wilson with MCB Strength Training Systems. You can check me out on the web at bikejames.com. You can also check out my pedal, the Catalyst pedal at pedalinginnovations.com. It's the only pedal on the market that allows you to support both ends of your arch. And so it's the only pedal that allows you to actually apply this movement that we're talking about here properly to the bike. You cannot move this way with an unstable arch. Trying to do all these exercises and movements that I just showed you while not having uh, any pressure or sta uh, you know, stability under the back end of the arch doesn't work. And the same thing applies to your bike. So if you're having trouble with this, even after you get the movement down, uh, maybe your pedals are too small, your foot's not supported properly, and your, your lower body's not able to move the way that it's supposed to. So if you're gonna practice uh, this movement in the gym, you wanna be able to apply it to the bike. So make sure that you're at least using a midfoot position, which will allow you to, uh, to uh, you know, mimic this movement on uh, you know, as best as possible. But again, getting a pedal that actually supports your foot properly, supports the arch properly, will help with this a lot as well. So check that out at pedalinginnovations.com. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this tip and I'll talk to you guys next time.